Hey guys, today's video is all about this adorable, quirky houseplant. This is commonly known as a frizzle sizzle. I've had mine for just over two years now. It's, you know, doubled. Uh, it was one bulb, it's now two. It's really, really fun, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing five things that you ought to know when it comes to caring for the frizzle sizzle and Oh yeah, I'm gonna be sharing what the weird flowers smell like. It's really, really interesting, so stay tuned. If you're looking for a, something a little different, a little unique, I highly recommend the Frizzle Sizzle. Now, I forgot to mention in the intro that I'm actually going to be repotting this uh, today in this video as well. So I'm going to be sharing the soil composition and all the ingredients that are uh, required for these uh, house plants. Now I found this one at more of a like rare sort of house plant nursery. Um, I'm not sure how common they are, but to get the conditions right, uh, uh, and if you do get the conditions right, they will put out these kind of uh, longer, sort of weird looking flowers. I'll be sure to give you some close-ups of all of that. Now, in the summertime, uh, or when they're getting a lot of really good light, these um, little chive looking pieces will curl up. You can see that some of them are really sort of curled up right now, but it can go super, super curly. Uh, we're just coming into spring and summer now, so I would imagine that these will curl um, as the light gets brighter and better. And also, um, you can see this one's kind of leaning towards uh, one side, and that's because it's kind of reaching for the light Definitely an indication that it needs more uh, sunlight, but I'm going to be repotting it, like I said, and jumping into um, all of the crucial care tips you need to know in five things that you ought to know. So let's jump right into it. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler. If you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or better yet, you can hit that subscribe button. Now to really show me some love, click on the bell for alerts and notifications for future content. Oh yeah, don't forget to check out my merch store, tylermossop.com. Because I'm going to be repotting my frizzle sizzle today, uh, here are the ingredients that I'm going to be using as the soil mix uh, for my frizzle sizzle. So I have a, some pumice, or perlite I should say, and then I have uh, here, which is some sand, pumice, and rocky, great for uh, succulents, and this is kind of like a bulb succulent plant. And then I have about 50 or 60% worth of that in this. And then I have this um, other mix here, which is good for succulents, but it has more organic material in it, some earthworm castings and some bark uh, in there with a little bit of perlite too. So I think the combination of these three things will really make for a great um, soil mix for my frizzle sizzle. So uh, the frizzle sizzle, when it comes to complexity, are kind of on the scale of easy to difficult in terms of houseplants. I would say that these are actually um, a little bit more on the challenging side than the easy side, and that's for a few reasons. Um, just because of how picky they are with um, watering and light and that kind of thing, but also they do have um, a dormancy period, which I will include as one of the five things you ought to know. Uh, anyways, I thought I should just mention that right from the onset. Let's see if I can uh, gradually get this thing out of here and show you um, the root system and the bulbs so you get a good idea of what this plant is all about. So I'm just gonna kind of carefully see how much I can do this way. Oh wow. All right, just be careful. This thing's huge. All right, so just have like a little bamboo stake here. I'm gonna try to pry it out. Just kind of go around the perimeter of the container. Uh, it seems to have really filled out this Oh, there we go. Wow. All right, so very carefully balance this out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna dust this off and give you a close up. Be right back. 
It looks like really healthy roots. This thing is much more intricate and larger than I was anticipating. Now I'm not sure if I kind of tilt this towards you, you can kind of see the bulbous nature. Now a year ago when I bought this, I it was one sort of bulb and it's kind of propagated and duplicated itself and now it has two sort of uh, main uh, plants, I guess you could say. Um, the root system is, like I said, looking really healthy, and I did lose some of the roots by kind of, you know, loosening up it all, and I think, I don't know if they're referred to as corms uh, for this particular house plant, but you can see there's a little kind of um, bulb there. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can see this right here. That could be a whole other plan in the making. Not quite sure, but this is great. Um, so let's get this guy repotted in its new home. So guys, one of the reasons I wanted to repot this is because its current container doesn't have a drainage hole. This does. This is also terracotta. It's gonna help absorb um, any excess moisture along with the horticultural charcoal I'm showing you that I'm placing at the base of this container. And that's gonna really help, especially when we get to watering. Uh, it will make a lot more sense but I just wanted to point that out. So I went ahead and put in a bunch of uh, my soil mix on top of that horticultural charcoal, which will help absorb uh, excess moisture. Now I'm just gonna kind of carefully put this into this container, um, like so. Add some of this just around the edges. Get this. Just carefully. And you wanna be careful not to just press down um, on the soil uh, for this particular plant because part of one of the reasons for using so much perlite is just to help give it some aeration so that it's, so it can breathe. Um, so yeah, FYI. All right, that is looking mighty fine. Great. What do you guys think? I'm hoping this summer it gets a lot more curly, but let's jump in to those five things you ought to know. So guys, the first thing you ought to know, wow, if you uh, do get the opportunity to get this plant and it flowers, don't forget to you smell uh, the flower because these weird flowers, they don't even really necessarily look like flowers, the yellow green, but they have a really distinct smell and it's kind of unbelievable, but it actually really does smell like vanilla. Uh, it puts out a really kind of pungent, kind of raw, almost unsweetened like vanilla scent. So yeah, there you go, good to know. Let's start with the kind of most complicated, the most kind of finicky part about this plant, which does include that dormancy period. And we're gonna start with watering. Now listen very carefully, this is very kind of different from your typical houseplant, and if you can get this part right, you should be good to go. I feel like I figured it out over the last few years, and this is definitely a good reminder for myself as well. So as spring is coming near and summer, that is typically when this plant undergoes its dormancy period. So what I'm recommending to you is in the course or throughout the course of the spring and summer, water this plant just like once a month, a very minute amount. And you know, basically it's kind of a little bit opposite. Maybe it's not, I have to think about that, but um, by watering it just like that once a month throughout the spring and summer is going to help maintain its dormancy period. And that means you're not going to basically overwater it and you know, kill off your beautiful frizzle sizzle. So the kind of, um, you know, flip uh, side of the coin on this is throughout the fall and winter. You're going to want to make sure that you are kind of watering this consistently uh, on a one week cadence. And that's really kind of um, picking up the watering in the winter and the fall, which is kind of opposite to the normal advice that I give, but that's exactly what this uh, houseplant wants. And uh, it, in, it appreciates those cooler temperatures and that's when it's not in dormancy and that's when you're gonna be watering it once a week throughout the fall and winter. So hope that helps. Now, the third thing you ought to know when it comes to caring for your frizzle sizzle, again, pay close attention. This is going to sound a little bit contrary to the advice I normally give. Now, this uh, particular thing you ought to know is uh, in and around fertilizer. So you're going to want to provide your frizzle sizzle with a well-balanced, diluted, 
fertilizer throughout the growing season. So stop right there. The growing season for this plant is during the winter months and not the summer. Uh, the summer is when it's going through that dormancy period. This actually grows in those cooler temperatures. So once you're, you're watering your frizzle sizzle, probably like once a week um, throughout that winter time, once you've watered it, after that watering, go ahead and give it a little bit of liquid, well diluted, well balanced fertilizer. Um, and you can do that maybe monthly, if that throughout the course of the winter months. So the fourth and fifth thing you ought to know are really in and around lighting and temperature. So let's start with uh, lighting, that is probably the most straightforward. When it comes to your frizzle sizzle, you wanna give this thing full sun. So for me, this is really basically right up against uh, a south facing window. But the reason that I'm kind of talking about light and temperature hand in hand um, together is because there is a major caveat. Um, because temperature is kind of a major player in its dormancy period, it grows in the winter, with those cooler temperatures, you wanna be sure that it's getting full sun, but it isn't close to, you know, draftiness, a door, um, where it's fluctuating in temperature. You wanna really kind of provide that consistent temperature to your frizzle sizzle. And if you have it even near like a radiator or um, any sort of draft, uh, it's probably not the best place for it. So something to really keep in mind. Um, but those are kind of like the simpler components of this plant. It's definitely watering the dormancy, um, the soil mix that make these things a little bit trickier, but I'm going to give you guys a lot of close-ups of this beautiful plant. And like I said, if you can get your hands on one of these, they're absolutely fantastic. They're worth the sort of hassle and the complication of, you know, it being very different than your typical house plant. But again, they just smell these flowers that don't kind of even look really like flowers have this kind of really raw vanilla smell to them. It's pretty fantastic and I've been absolutely enamored with mine over the course of the last two plus years. So there you go. Well, that's it for me. Definitely give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, show me some love, hit that subscribe button and uh, missed you guys already until the next one.